a pleasure and honor to be here and contribute to this um, discussion and I believe that there will be some recurring motives that link our two presentations, at least I do hope so. So, um, if we were to nominate the one single most influential passage concerning perceptions of the North in the entire classical Latin ancient Greek literature, um, the previously mentioned Jordanes' Aesthetica would be a very strong contender, and I believe it would probably win the contest. <laughs> it's the famous phrase of uh, the island of Skansa, that Brit already mentioned, as quasi ufficina gentium aut certe velut vagina nationum, the workshop of tribes, the armory of tribes, or the wound of nations. This passage, um, Jordanes himself at least according to his own testimony, was partially of Gothic origin, and he narrates the origines, the origins of the Gothic uh, tribe, the Gothic Gens, and locates them in this, on this northern island, which is remarkably fertile and seems to give birth to a continuous stream of barbarian tribes. Um, the image has shaped the way the north is perceived, essentially up to the 20th century, as it will hope to be, sure, to be able to show. Of course, it doesn't make very much sense, since the North is not exactly known to be extremely densely populated, uh, but still, the image is there, it was there, and it still is in our, in our heads. We can't really get rid of the Vagination. The image is, of course, extremely evocative in itself. So we have this armory of nations where weapons are handed out to stream after stream of barbarians and then they go south and pillage. And it's the womb of nation that so continuously gives birth because it's so incredibly fertile. Um, the continuous export of barbarian tribes from the north. It's a strong image. Definitely worth, worth um, analyzing in detail. But I want to... I want to stress the aspect of visual visualization in a slightly different way and look at visualization in the strict sense of the words as in attempt to convey this notion of the Vagina Nationum in visual cartographic uh, depictions. There are plenty of artistic um, attempts to somehow express this notion of the ever-fertile north, the origin, the cradle of nations. Um, for example, to the left is the famous um, cover page of um, Swedish scholar Olaus Rydbeck's Atlantica. Rydbeck claimed to have discovered that the famous island of Atlantis had been in Sweden. He was ridiculed by later generations for this and he was a bit of a uh, well, crackpot, but um, back in his era this was considered a provocative but extremely interesting idea. And here we see him dissecting the globe. He was a medical doctor by education, so it fits. And he somehow pulls back one layer with Sweden on it and there's Atlantis beneath. So it's the same idea. Um, the North is the origin of all civilization, of migrating tribes. Rudbeck, um gets rid of the barbarian aspect, but it essentially his idea is still very much Jordanus oriented. Or well, this is a Danish publication a few years later, The Origins of the Kimbri and the Goths, and if you look closely, you have the Ark of Noah in the back, and you have the Polar Star, so both together essentially refer to the very same image. The Ark of Noah is the origin of tribes, as the Bible tells us. Every tribe originated from there at some point. So there have been attempts to visualize it, or at least to hint at a similar idea, but the one technique of visualization that really made sure that this image is inscribed into our heads is the historical map. There are countless of these maps. Um, in school books, on the internet, in this case um, on Wikipedia, um, sometimes a northern origin, in this case we're talking about the Vandals, sometimes a northern origin is explicitly um, depicted on the map. More often it's discreetly hidden away, so the, the arrow 
come into the picture from the north, but we don't know for sure where they really originate from. But still, it's all very much north-south oriented. And these images, these maps are omnipresent. They are mainly responsible for inscribing the Bagina Nazione motif in our collective mental map, in our historical consciousness, and also in our perception of northernness. They are, of course, a bit dangerous because they suggest that there are clearly defined ethnic entities. Each of these arrows supposedly is one tribe, one gens. And um, modern research has shown that these um, migrating tribes were certainly not as clear-cut and as easy to define as these maps suggest. But still, they are there, we can't get rid of them, and they're in our heads. Um, if um, a historical motive is mocked in Asterix, it's usually a good indicator that it is important. And if you have this little map with all the arrows and different goths banging each other on the head with big wooden clubs, which is how barbarians do it. So, um, what I would try to do in the uh, next minutes is to look at the origins of this kind of cartographic depiction of the Wagner Nazione motive. It's been a long way, because initially, um, the oldest cartographic depictions of barbarian tribes that we know tend to be rather static in nature. They usually do not have arrows on them, they usually don't uh, suggest any motion, any movement, they just assign a place to the barbarian, usually in the north. This is a detail from the famous Tabula Potringiana, a medieval copy of a late Roman road map. And on top, in the north, you have, in this case, the Marcomanni, uh, the Vandoli, the Vandals. So you have the barbarian tribes in the north, but they're not moving. They're essentially static. To my knowledge, um, please correct me if you know something earlier, the oldest attempt to um, show a movement of a tribe on a map is also from the Herford Mappamundi. In this case, it's not northern barbarians. But it's the tribe of, um, it's the people of Israel, it's Exodus. This is the migration, they're crossing the Red Sea, they are wandering around in the desert and get lost, and then they cross the Jordan and come to the Holy Land. It's, as far as I know, the first attempt to really do this arrow movement on a map. But of course, the Hereford Mappamundi does not want to show, doesn't primarily want to show geography, it wants to convey um, sacred geography. So this is more an indication of um, the confusion of the people of Israel. It does not claim to be, uh, to be um, reconstructing a factual migration. If we look at the um, well-known and very famous Carta Marina of Olaus Magnus, we get closer to the um, topic. Olaus Magnus, as most of you will know, was the brother of the younger brother of Johannes Magnus, the um, founding father of Swedish Gothicism, an entire state ideology that basically went back to Jordanes' idea, the Goths have come from the north, have come from Sweden, and this is why the Swedes can be so extremely proud of themselves. And Olaus essentially wrote in the same line of argument. You have all the wonderful details for which the Katamarina is uh, famous for, the kings, the sea monsters, the curious ethnographic details, but you have no migration tribes. The only thing you get is in the far east corner, southeast corner, you have um, this, which is essentially um, a very early attempt to convey the same feeling onto a map, or to depict it on a map. Ex Scandia, from the island of Scandia, Scandinavia, consisting of no Norway, Sweden, and Gothia, Jutland, you have all those tribes that originated from there. Of course, there are the Goths, and Jordanes is quoted together with Paulus Diakonos as the main source. You have the Longobards, another classic, the Huns are a bit of a surprise, but uh, we would not locate them in Scandinavia, but Olaus did. 
that the Swiss are coming from Scandinavia might sound bizarre, but it was a commonly accepted theory back in this time, since um, um, the two ethonyms um, sounded somewhat vaguely different, vaguely similar. And we have the previously mentioned Amazons. So um, it's clearly an attempt to show the Jordanes hypothesis, the Wagner Nationen motive. But still, the true cartographical aspect, it's an addendum to the map. It's not part of the map itself. Olaus is based his um, um, depiction on, um, well, an attempt by German humanist Franciscus Irenicus from the early 16th century. This is far less um, aesthetically pleasing, but it's essentially the same thing. You have Sc Scandia on top, and then you have all the tribes originating from there. So it's the direct model for Olaus's far nicer to look at um, depiction of the same idea. But um, Francisco Serenicus suggested two possible genealogies of all these tribes. The left one is the one that inspired Olaus Magnus. The right one is a far more conservative one. It's, it's very biblical. It starts with Noah on top, of course. You have Twiscon, who is the twister of Tacitus, is Germania, who was usually believed to be a um, post-Diluvian son of Noah. It's a rather desperate attempt to link Tacitus to the Bible, but this was firmly believed in, in the early 16th century. And then you have different other Germanic kings. You have Gambrinus, the inventor of beer, a very important person. You have Vandalus from whom the Vandals come, so there are some hints that tribes do play a role, but essentially it's a, it's a genealogy of individuals. Which is clearly um, the more individualized alternative to the other tribal genealogy that Francisco Cyrenicus also suggested. So we do have um, a shift in focus from the individual personalized genealogy of Francisco Serenicus to the collective tribal genealogy that Olaus Magnus then you chose to use. And Olaus has this very rudimentary attempt to project it spatially because he has at least this mini-map of Scandinavia on top. So, why did he do it? Why did he not do the nice, clear-cut arrows? Simply because the technique was not very well known at this point. If we look at one of his contemporaries, um, now I'm being patriotic and um, trying to present a fellow Viennese, the Austrian um, court historiographer Wolfgang Monatius, he invented the term Migratio Gentium, which later became German Völkerwanderung, the Bavarian Migrations. Latius was a great scholar, and uh, he took great efforts to show all these barbarians um, in a very, with great artistic talent. He was also a brilliant cartographer. We, one of the very first maps of Hungary was done by him, so he was a pioneer of cartography. But he did not link the two. There is no attempt um, in his um, works to project barbarian migration onto the map. Barbarian migration is only conveyed through text and images like this where the protagonists are shown. It is not inscribed into the map. Essentially, it stayed the same for quite a while. This is another pioneer of um, historical ge geography, Philip Kluver, um, whose book on, the, on ancient Germany dom dominated most of the 17th century. But again, as you see here, each tribe is shown in a particular location. It does not move. It's essentially the same static idea of ethnicity that the Tabula Portringiana had. The very first attempts to um, change this, again, link back to biblical history, similar to the attempt that they have for Mappamundi. This is from Sir Walter Raleigh's History of the World, roughly the same time as Philip Kluver. And here you have the Tower of Babel and all those 
migrating tribes that populate the world after the languages are dispersed at Babel. If you look in detail, it's somewhere in between the image the, uh, of the barbarian or the migrating tribes and the arrow technique, because they are still somehow shown with lances sticking up. They try to, he tries to convey the image of the migrating group, but in essence, it, end up, it ends up fulfilling the very same role as the arrows we are familiar with. A clear-cut motion. A clear-cut motion of settlers, of pioneers, of migrating ethnic groups. The very first attempt to um, use this in combination with the Jordanis motif is a rather obscure work by um, a German scholar called Hagel Guns. This was hardly circulated at all. Apparently only a few copies were made and no more than two have survived to the present day. It's a completely confusing map. If we zoom into the north it gets a bit more um, easy to look at. But he, the entire map is crisscrossed by hundreds of different migrating tribes. But here we have the idea it's the Gothormbia, the road that the Goths took, the road that the Heralds took, the road that the Northmans, the Angles, and all the others took. So it's, um, for the first time, the old Jordanes idea expressed through cartography. Once this had been done, even though this had such a very, um, it was only circulated in a few copies, the idea started to be transmitted and disseminated strongly. And roughly a century later, such maps have become extremely popular. This is um, early 19th century, and it's more or less the same type of map that we are used to. Uh, somewhat confusing, but um, clearly assigned ethnic entities migrating all over Europe, conquering, pillaging, and plundering, and all of them come from the north, where, thanks to Jordanes, we know that the Bagina Nationum is. It did reach its, um, the peak of its usage and abuse in the 1930s when um, publications like this um, tried to argue that, again, it's like a mockery of poor old Olaus Rüttbeck, entire civilization, entire um, culture has come from the north and migrated from something that was considered to be an Aryan Urheimat. But despite uh, these obvious abuses, and uh, despite its uh, appropriation by um, German nationalism and even Nazi rhetorics, the basic argument has remained with us. So essentially, it's a three-step um, process. We have the original text from Jordanes, which had this evocative image of the Vagina Nationum and made sure that we don't forget it. We have the very first attempts by men like Olaus Magnus to express this through a technique that was still rooted in the individual genealogies of the Middle Ages. And then we have the paradigm shift marked by Hagelgans, where for the very first time historical cartography and the convincing technique of the easily um, defined and seemingly innocent arrow, where this technique made sure that this image, the North as the womb of nations, would stay with us. And as much as our generation of historians have tried to argue that this not, does not make very much sense at all, this image is so deeply rooted in the public consciousness that it seems very likely to stay with us for at least a few more decades or even much longer. I'm grateful for your attention. I would be even more grateful for any questions, comments, or criticism that you might have. So, um, thank you. <laughs>